Hi and welcome to the vlog. I'm Tova, this is Parent XP. I'm sitting here, freshly showered, washed hair, uh, and I'm gonna put my makeup on and get ready for the day. But I have actually promised you guys for quite some time a bit of a chat about mental health. So I thought I'd um, multitask, as usual, and talk about it. And also because this is still a subject that is a little bit difficult for me to tackle because it is still extremely close to home and therefore multitasking, i.e. doing my makeup while I talk about it, is <clears throat> one of the techniques I'm using to get through it, okay? <sighs> we need techniques. For as long back as I can remember almost, but definitely my entire adult life, I have been suffering from winter depressions. Come winter time, the darker days mean my body and my brain doesn't produce enough serotonin and my mood is quite severely affected because of that. It's a chemical imbalance in my body and I'm absolutely, well no I'm not fine with it, I would much rather not be depressed but like I don't have a problem with the fact that I suffer from winter depressions. This year, if you have been following me for a while, you know that I've been battling depression Anyway, since the summer, since the spring, well, not this year, last year. God, it's January. Bloody hell. A lot of this has to do with the fact that since leaving my husband and moving out, I finally have had time to sit down and go, right, well, how, how am I feeling? Because I didn't have that space before. And, and when I've had time to sit down and think about how I'm feeling, the answer is I'm really not doing that good. I've left my husband. I lost my job. I'm having to completely reinvent myself. I have a severely disabled child. It, you know, a lot of stuff was piled on. So most of last year, I was struggling with my mental health and I was for a very long time trying to manage it on my own with techniques that I have learned over the years. And to a large extent, it worked. And then the winter depression hit on top of it and I crashed. Oh Lord, I crashed. Like, totally. I got really, really bad. And I knew that there was no chance that I could manage this on my own anymore. So I reached out to my GP and I asked for antidepressants. And I also reached out to the Bedfordshire Wellbeing Service, which is the mental health service in, well, Bedfordshire. <laughs> funny that clues in the name and I got on a um, group therapy webinar that actually started within a month of me self-referring and I've had two sessions with that and I'm sitting down today in a little bit to talk to the therapist and just go through whether that is the right setting for me or whether they have something perhaps a little bit more tailored to me to offer because I actually don't think that the setting I'm in right now is the right one for me, but um, I'm going to have a chat to her about it anyway. Depression takes a lot of forms. You get a lot of different symptoms and not everybody's the same. Not everybody gets exactly the same symptoms. I get a lot of anxiety and I get extremely people phobic. And that's being people phobic is a real challenge because anything that means being around people or interacting with people in any way is so difficult. And yet my kids have to go to school. I have to take them to school and I have to get food for them. OK, maybe I could do online shopping, but, but like you have to go out, you have to do things, you have to adult and you have to interact with people. And that is a real, real struggle at the moment. And it actually comes goes with also things like, you know, reaching out to my GP and asking for help. I don't want to talk to my GP, I don't want to talk to anyone. Reaching out to the wellbeing service, self-referring myself. I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to have to talk to you. This is difficult. For me, if I could get away with it, depression means I would isolate myself. And to a very large extent, I have isolated myself over the last few months. I've avoided a lot of friends. I've avoided a lot of social situations. Not all, but as many as I could possibly get away with without jeopardizing the well-being of my children. Another symptom of depression for me is that everything becomes very... Um, 
Oh, <laughs> I can't find the words. That's probably another, that's actually another symptom as well. No, um, it requires a lot of effort. Everything requires a lot of effort. Everything drains energy. Getting out of bed is a huge effort in the morning. Like the, it shouldn't be an effort. Like alarm should go off and I should sit up and I should get my butt out of bed. It shouldn't be difficult, but it is extremely difficult when I'm depressed to get out of bed and face the world. And I don't know if this is part of the people phobia, like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to get out there. I'm gonna have to see, you know, in interact with the rest of the world and I don't want to. Making the bed is so tiring and tidying up is so tiring and doing the washing up is so tiring and having a shower is tiring. And, and if everything takes a lot of extra effort, then you need to go and have a lie down. <laughs> And I've had this, I've had days when I've taken Elin to school and I need to go and lie down for an hour after that because I am so drained, I'm so shattered. I don't know if you've heard about spoon theory, but spoon theory is actually quite, um, quite a clever way of explaining it and really is aimed towards people with chronic illness. And the idea is you have a set number of spoons per day and this is your energy. This is what you have, what you can use. And maybe showering takes one spoon. Going out for coffee with a friend takes three spoons. Um, so if you have only a very limited amount of spoons a day, then you have to think very carefully about what you're spending your spoons on. Look it up because I'm sure other people explain it a lot better than I do. But depression, you get the same kind of thing. You have limited energy in a day. You have limited capacity, a limited number of spoons. So if I have say 10 spoons in a day, but five of them goes on just taking my girl to, girls to school, I only have another five left. What do I do with those five? Well, I'm certainly not gonna waste them on seeing people because that's really draining. I might have to waste one of them doing the washing up because I have to do the washing up and I'll waste another one of them on cooking because I have to cook, my girls have to eat, I have to eat. I have lost weight, I'm well aware of it and I want to regain that weight, but I'm so stressed and I'm so anxious that I'm losing my appetite and yeah not happy. So then what, what, what doesn't happen? Well, what doesn't happen is perhaps putting away the clean laundry. So instead I have five loads of clean laundry littering my office. So I can't sit in my office and work. That's not a, a work environment. Crap, what do I do then? Like, this is how, this is how depression works. It's, it, you know, everything becomes so much more difficult and so much more challenging. And, and yeah, you have to, you have to be really, really, careful with what you expand, expend, one of those two, your energy on. And here comes the real nasty kicker to all of this. When you are that drained, when you are that tired, when you are that exhausted, when everything is taking that much extra out of you, the only way you can get out of the depression is to choose to work hard on it yourself. I'm sorry but that is you have to choose to want to get better you have to choose to put in that hard work and oh my god it is so so difficult to do so how do you do it how do you manage like you have limited limited capacity limited spoons you don't want to be in this place you want to get out of it but you have limited spoons and you're going to have to take a big chunk of those spoons and spend them on trying to get better. Even though that leaves you in a massive spoon deficiency, it is the only way to do it. Sorry guys, sorry guys. So I do have a number of methods I am using to help me with this. And a number of methods I'm using to limit how many spoons I use. So first of all, I have chosen to want to become better. I don't want to be stuck in this. I don't want my kids to have a depressed mum. I don't want to keep feeling like this. I know how capable and amazing and energetic I can be. And I want that person back. I miss her. I really, really miss her. So I went on antidepressants. I decided that this was too much for me to handle without some medical help, particularly as the winter depression is a chemical imbalance. I'm get, using medicine to help balance my brain chemistry. It has taken me a while to feel better. The 
first three weeks of it, I felt awful, like really, really super bad. But I've increased the dose. I've been on them now for nearly two months. No, actually, slightly above two months, I think. Slightly more than two months. Yeah. And um, I'm definitely feeling an effect. I'm feeling an effect. I have days when I function. I have days when I can go to the supermarket without getting a panic attack. And I can now definitely work. <laughs> I can do my vlogging and work on my website and do all of that kind of stuff. So it's it's done a huge, it, it's, it's really been helpful. I have started therapy. As I say, I'm not entirely sure that this particular therapy is the right one for me. And I am about to sit down with the therapist today on the phone and just go through and see whether what I feel is kind of echoed by her and if they have something better to offer me because so much about what these therapy sessions are, are about is activating yourself when you're depressed and you are you've, you're so depressed you become passive like you don't do anything anymore um, and so she gives us homework of things we have to do. And one of the things we had to do was um, create a baseline diary. What does a week look like for you? What do you really do? And she initially wanted us to do it in, in hourly blogs. And I was like, I can't do it in hourly blogs. There's not enough space. This is the week's baseline for me. And I have three, four, five things in every half hour. Do the breakfast, create feed for Eileen and her medicines, and then uh, give those to her. Plan the day, prep vlog recording, change Eileen and dress her and make sure that Alice is dressed and all the teeth are brushed and hair is brushed and put up. Take the girls out to the playground, hang laundry, cook lunch, do crafting with my children so that I'm actually a present mom and doing stuff with them. I mean, do you see what I mean? It's like da 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 So I don't think that my issue is activating myself. I think my issue is dealing with the overwhelm. There is so much and I'm like, I can't cope with all of this. And then I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I'm a project manager at heart. So I probably push myself too far and then I'm too tired. It was interesting to do this baseline and kind of go, some things have to change. Some things absolutely have to change. So I've started using my bullet journal a bit more effectively again. I did have a couple of weeks in December when I didn't use it very effectively. Like this week is pretty empty. But then this week I have been using it much more. So I've been planning my days. I've been planning out my tasks. I've been ticking them off. And it's, it's quite... Um, it's a huge kind of feeling of relief going, okay, well, I've done this, tick. I had to uh, prepare certain administrative tasks, so I wrote out exactly what other things I need to prepare and then did one after the other. Because as I say, I have so much to do that um, just having kind of gone, right, focus on this, now focus on this, is calming me down a lot and it's making me a lot more productive as well. I'm planning in rest. I am setting aside time to do nothing unless it's having a nap. I'm allowed to have a nap. <laughs> That's something I can do. So I'm planning that in. If in a day I can carve out some rest, get that rest in. I have decided to look for my triggers, how I'm feeling and why. What triggers anxiety? What triggers stress? What triggers panic? But also, what triggers positive feelings? What makes me feel positive and accomplished? What makes me feel happy? And I actually think those are much more important than the anxiety triggers, because if I can identify the things that make me happy, I can make more of them or do more of that. Uh, it's, in a, in, it's in a different book because I, it's, it's just a question of, of space, but I'm now doing gratitude journaling again every day. And I've mentioned this before and I've fallen off the wagon so many times, but basically if every day you sit down and write down the things that have been good, you rewire your brain to see the positive. Things in my gratitude journal yesterday, uh, I have uh, a friend who's in hospital. I met her husband and he said she's doing much better. We're actually starting to look at a day to come home. Amazing. Positive. That's a big one. That's a great one. 
After a meeting yesterday, I decided to go to my friend's coffee shop for a coffee and sit there in between my meeting and going to give early lunch rather than just going home, which meant that I got a big hug from my friend. Huge positive, right? I found a good podcast to listen to. Alice went to bed really well. She managed bedtime so well yesterday. Fantastic. So those were the things on my gratitude list. On one day, um, one of my entries for the positive list is that my carer sorted out Eileen's school bag for the first school day. That wasn't anything I did, but it was a huge help for me and therefore a positive. So it's just focusing on those things that were really good in a day to kind of start that cycle of positive thinking and the cycle of noticing the good stuff rather than just going everything is so stressful everything is so difficult everything like no not everything is stressful not everything is bad and I just want to really focus on the positive things and then we have tools to save my spoons I mentioned I've started medicine uh, antidepressants I'm on antidepressants in a blister pack I have written the days on. This is not so much to help me remember to take them every day as to help me remember I have taken them. So I don't have to go, oh hang on, did I take my medicine today? Or did I not? Oh I don't know, I can't remember. Oh, but what if I have and then I take a double dose? And what if I haven't and then I'm... I know I've taken my medicine today. Meal planning. Today I am cooking this. I don't have to think about it then. So if I meal plan, there is no effort being spent into thinking about what to do for lunch and what to do for dinner. And also shopping is so much easier and shopping is so much cheaper. <laughs> because if you've meal planned and you do a shopping list for your meal plan, you don't buy anything you don't need. So those are things I can do in order to save my spoons. Rest and just organize my life a little bit better around not having to expend mental energy on certain items that can be fixed. Oh, and when I was at my absolute worst, I put myself on sick leave. So at the moment, I am not working for an employer, I work for myself, but actually I'm on benefits because I don't make enough money yet. I signed myself off from Universal Credits for two weeks. Well, my doctor signed me off. But I realised that if I had been working for an employer, if I had been working in an office, I would have been on sick leave based on how I was feeling. And I was like, but this is no different. This is absolutely no different. I work for myself. I need to put myself on sick leave. <laughs> so I did for two weeks. And I also limited myself to social interactions with three people. And to just give you an idea of how bad I was, my mum was not one of those three. And my mum is amazing. But I had three friends, very, very carefully picked out, three friends that in very different ways were very, very safe places. One is the friend who would call me when they knew that I was in a supermarket and therefore uh, about to panic and would check in on me and kind of go are you eating what are you eating that kind of stuff and would come over and just sit down and watch a stupid film and chill out another friend is a friend who's also battling mental health and became this safe place to just I can go and sit in their house and drink tea and we don't have to talk <laughs> that's been a place that kind of just been a huge a huge um, place for relaxation and mental space. This friend also has a gel manicure kit so I could do my fingernails there with gel manicure and then that will actually last for a couple of weeks and it's made me feel really good. My, my nails look good, I feel good. And the third friend is somebody I've been able to go and visit and stay with and they have dogs so uh, it's been We've had to go out in the morning and go for a long walk with the dogs. So that's been morning sunshine and dogs and dogs are therapeutic. You sit and cuddle them or like I can, I could sit on their sofa and one of the dogs would lie on my feet. Amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. So am I absolutely worse? I limited myself to these three people, but it meant that I had three people that I still 
spoke with and I still went to and I still activated myself around so I didn't isolate myself fully and they were people who recharged my batteries and helped me manage my energy levels rather than the kind of people who drain you and you you know who those people are mental health mental health is hard work a lot of you are going through similar things to me in terms of uh, season affective disorder so many of you are going through the similar thing of having a disabled child and the difficulties and worries and extra bits and pieces that come with that a lot of you are isolated you're disabled, you've lost care, you don't have the means of getting out and about and accessing the things you need to access. Like this is hard. This is hard for all of us. All of us are really struggling. This COVID stuff has, it's, it's been bad for everybody's mental health. So I, I feel for you. I really, really do because this is so tough. Tough and rough and challenging and ah. Oh, all of that kind of stuff and as I say it's just you have to choose to work on it and that is so hard so anyone any of you kind of gone right well I'm getting out of bed this morning and I'm going to um, do one little thing to help my mental health I applaud you I'm patting you on the back I'm so proud of you <laughs> and I'm so proud of me because I'm working on it and it is hard and I have like I have days when I feel like I'm taking five steps backwards. It is going to get better and it is getting lighter. Every evening now is several minutes longer than the one before. So it's going to get brighter and we can get through this. And yeah, share with me your tips. What helps you? What kind of things and tricks and stuff do you use to help manage your mental health? And is there any other things that I've spoken to today that have resonated with you and that you want to try? Then leave me a comment. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks for watching. Mwah.